everyone and welcome to this first episode of the Filias podcast. My name is Sylvie and I'm a French uh, lady, or so I am told, um, uh, living in the UK for now nearly 15 years. Um, I am in York in uh, the northeast of England and um, yes, so I wanted to uh, get into this uh, making podcast adventures. Um, first of all, the name Filias Podcast. It is because I am a hand dyer and my Etsy shop and my yarn is Filias Yarns. I'll put a link to the shop and to all the social media where you can find me on the notes below that video. Um, this uh, I call this a making podcast because although it be mostly knitting, uh, there will be sometimes a little bit of sewing and a little bit of other crafts. Um, I'm giving myself a bit of freedom when it comes to the structure of this podcast. I don't want, you know, it's not going to be a set in stone, finished objects, work in progress, etc, etc. It's a little bit as I feel, uh, as I feel like. Uh, it is also because, and that is a common thread between Phileas Yarns, the hand at yarn and this podcast. Uh, I do love travels and I want to put travels uh, into my knitting and into my crafts. Um, and uh, for example, this episode is brought to you by some travels. We are going to go to Norway. And uh, and yeah, so that, that will give a different structures and a different kind of storyline to this podcast so uh, this first episode we're going to start by going to Norway and uh, you will see some beautiful landscapes I find them beautiful I hope you will too um, but I will also talk in that kind of vlog but uh, about some knitting you know what I've been putting in my suitcase what I've been wearing and, and this kind of things uh, into details and I will get back to that afterwards so uh, traveling and knitting uh, prominently on this podcast uh, no sewing this time um, but hopefully I'll get my uh, mojo back on I've actually got my sewing machine just set up on the table next to me you can't see it but it's there ready to to roll and uh, hopefully I'll get to do some sewing soon so in the future I will be talking about that too. Um, I'm just going to look at my notes see what I meant to tell you. Yes, so as well as all the reference about my social media where to find me on the notes below again uh, I will also put all the reference to everything I'm talking about in terms of uh, patterns and yarn and this kind of things. Uh, below this video um, and also obviously uh, I welcome comments uh, to this video I hope uh, you will enjoy that and uh, and uh, and you know tell me uh, what you liked and what you didn't and this kind of things um, in regards to comments I would like to um, mention that I want this podcast to be an open and welcoming space for everyone regarding your gender, regarding your uh, sexual orientation, regarding your religion, your skin color, um, your shape and size. Everyone is welcome here and, uh, and I hope you will find this space um, as warm as I intended to be for everyone and when it comes to comments uh, I would like you to be sure that you come in in a respectful manner for everyone and uh, that your comments are constructive that you know um, I mean criticism is fine as long as it's made in a clever way and it's just not you know slagging people off I will have none of that and I'll make sure I monitor these comments and uh, and delete any that I find is is not polite or is not respectful to um, each and another. So I'm saying this out loud on this very first podcast. Uh, I will write it 
as well in the notes below this little statement and I will make sure I write it in every notes in future podcast which I hope there will be future podcasts um yeah so I hope that uh, is okay with you and so um yeah we're gonna start this podcast with this little video um little vlog in Norway um you have to forgive me uh, this is my first time so uh the uh the videos and the editing is might be a little bit well not so great but you know I'm not a professional uh a video maker so uh, please be forgiving and um, my English can be a little bit weird especially when I juggle between French and English in, in like back and forth uh, especially when it comes to the word alpaca in French it is alpaca with a G and I seem to mix one another constantly I just can't get him my head around it so when I say alpaca I obviously mean alpaca with a C go figure anyway let's go to Norway and see you shortly after that So yesterday I arrived in Tromsø, which is in the northern area of Norway, uh, which is above the uh, Arctic Circle, and um, and I thought I wanted to share with you this uh, few days that I'm spending there. Uh, it's quite early now; it's uh, maybe 6:30 or 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so I don't speak too loud because I don't want to wake uh, my friend who's traveling with me, staying just a uh, room uh, next to me. Um, but yeah, as you can see, uh, it's super daylight. Um, it's um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if it's really dark at night uh, anymore. Um, we went to bed yesterday. It was past 11 p.m. and uh, it was still quite light. And uh, I think the day breaks about 3 a.m. as in as in sunrise above the horizon. But I'm not even sure it goes so low as actually night anymore. Um, but it's absolutely gorgeous outside and um, yeah but for now as I say it's uh, it's quite early in the morning and uh, so I'm gonna wait for my pal to wake up and get up and uh, so we can go on our adventures by uh, doing some knitting and watching a little podcast on my tablet it's a holiday hmm which pair of socks should I wear today hmm bit of a tough choice but at the end of the day I think they're all gonna be worn at some point during this trip so just be any. Today's winning pair of socks are Bleeberry Tarn by Louis Stillbrook. Um, I quite like those socks, I quite like the um, um, cable that runs the length of this side and also just the leg on this side Yes, I'm wearing tights on underneath my jeans because it's like five degrees out there, so that is needed. Thermal ties. Um, and uh, this is an eye of partridge um, heel. Um, I had to mend the toe of this sock a couple of days ago just before coming uh, to Tromso. And I just realized putting them on that. Eee! I've got a little hole coming on the other side, on the other foot. Uh, so I'm just gonna uh, warm them out a little bit more uh, today, I think, and then uh, we'll mend that uh, once we're home. Uh, the yarn is uh, some Italian yarn that I've bought uh, at my mom's local yarn shop, or like it's it's quite like a, a, a big a big haul. Um, it's, it's a big shop. Uh, it's called Lane Center. It's in Marseille. And uh, I'll uh, I have to give you more details once I get back and I get my hands on the label, but it is uh, some virgin wool, uh, alpaga, and um, and uh, and then some uh, nylon or polyamide or something like that. Um, yeah.
Good morning everyone, this is the morning of the second full day I'm spending in Tromso. Um, the weather isn't so great today, um, it is very overcast and uh, the forecast is for snow um, within the next couple of hours and it's going to last the, re the remainder of the day. Um, so the plan for today is to chill and relax and, and go to town, which is just down the road literally, we're very central, and uh, and spend some time in city centre, just uh, walk about and uh, go to shops and, and go see some sites and grab a coffee and this kind of things. Uh, so um, I'm guessing the videos for today will be um, maybe less or maybe just not as uh, maybe stunning <laughs> as the ones that I filmed yesterday in terms of landscapes because we're not going to go far. Uh, however, I do hope to find a little yarn shop. Uh, I've got a couple of addresses that I can go to so um, hmm, we shall see. Um, without much further ado, what kind of socks am I wearing today? Today's socks are my mashed potato socks by Verena Kors, also known as the Wool Club. I quite like those socks for the texture and uh, and, and the stitch that is used there. It's kind of like a, a sort of diagonal waffle kind of stitch, which is nice. The bit that I don't like is that these are two-up socks and I always struggle to um, fit my foot around the two-up so two socks pardon me um i'm not gonna go at length about sub constructions and the fit uh today that i'll probably get to talk about it again on another hopefully another podcast but um but yeah i always struggle so these socks uh, it's a bit a struggle to put them on they're, they're very tight um on the top of my foot but um but yeah, but once I'm in them, they're super cozy and it's very comfortable uh, to wear, especially in today's weather, it's going to be very warm and cozy in my boots. chilly out there, quiet chilly. forecast uh, was expecting uh, it starting snowing um, during our little wandering about town so uh, after a bit of shopping and after a bit of lunch we uh, which was delicious by the way um, we headed back home to our Airbnb and uh, we're gonna enjoy a few uh, quiet hours of uh, the afternoon um, it's just it is really miserable out there. It's not even snowing proper. It's it's kind of sleeting. It's not it it's really not nice to uh, for walking about and and it's not enjoyable at all. So um, rather chillax in the warmth uh, at home with plenty of tea and knitting and reading and this kind of things. So anyway, um, went out shopping and uh, I did find the uh, yarn shop that was recommended by my friend Diana. Um, which is the bag is here it's uh, Usflieden uh, and I'm sorry I'm going to start butchering uh, Norwegian because uh, all the names I'm going to pronounce very wrong um, and I did buy so that that shop is uh, it's got yarn um, 
for knitting is got knitwear uh, there's loads of lovely sweaters and scarves and uh, and and coats woven as well as knitted uh knitwear um and uh it also got like a whole section of very traditional um costumes uh norwegian traditional costumes which was very fun um i didn't get to take some pictures i guess i was feeling a little bit shy the the lady of the shop she was um she was a bad in that area when i kind of wanted to take some pictures and uh Although I did ask if I could take some pictures uh, for the yarn store bit and that was no problem. I felt a little bit shy about the costumes. It was a bit, you know, something different. So uh, so it's a shame I didn't get to take some pictures. It was very beautiful though. The, the, the make was absolutely stunning. Anyway, we were talking about the yarn and what did I buy? You probably see my little hand uh, going towards some uh, particular yarn and uh, stroking it. I did buy it. This lovely burgundy plum color. I'm uh, showing you the label. There we are. So the um, name of the brand, I believe, is Edesweg Ulvara Fabric, or I think it's mostly con commonly known uh, with through their website. Ul, ul um, yeah, that was that was quite a lot of it, and uh, I believe the weight of the yarn is actually that solje solje. Uh, for what I could gather, um, that is that that means it's a fingering weight, and the yarn itself, as in the, the sheep and uh, and. Um, to make is the Pelsul Garn, Pelsul being the, the sheep, it's a crossbreed between um, Scotland and something that I forgot already, which is very Norwegian, but it is a local, uh, it is a local breed here, so I'm very happy with it. It's, uh, it, it's gorgeous to the touch, it feels very, it's got a little bit of tooth, uh, a little bit of a bite, and it, it's got a lovely lovely sheen of uh, of hair but it feels very soft already as it is so i'm uh, i'm really looking forward to uh to see how it uh, how it feels when it's washed and blocked and it's probably going to going to soften even more so it's going to be absolutely great to wear i have no doubt i did buy four skeins of these um i'm thinking i'm going to make a cardigan um when i'm gonna make this cardigan i have no idea no time too many sweaters to knit isn't that everybody's problem um so yeah so i did buy four skin the four so that's 400 grams of uh fingering weight um slightly yeah i mean yeah 300 meters per 100 grams so yeah it's 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 quite a thing yeah it looks like a finger and it's quite thin too thin to be a sport weight so uh so yeah but i did buy foreskin just in case i want to make something that's got cables or a little nice stitches that might require a little bit more uh yarn than just a plain stockinette so uh, we shall see what it will become but uh, i i am solely i'm very very happy with this purchase um yes wonderful Good morning, it's the third day of, uh, third full day in Tromso and I'm again uh, up before everyone else and the first up. Uh, so I'm in bed knitting uh, and uh, watching some podcasts so I thought I'd uh, pop by and talk about what I'm actually needing, my work in progress uh, on my travels. I am working, usually I do knit socks but this time I'm working on a Hayward uh, Boxy Dolman Pullover by Julie Hoover which comes from a Brooklyn Tweed collection. Uh, I quite like working on this project on uh, on my travels because it's knitted flat so with the back and the front and the two sleeves all knitted flat and then I have to sew it up together. I'm currently on the back. Um, I am working this in uh, 
John Auburn Textiles Harvest Hues in the Juniper colorway. And as you can see on the labels, it's this big fit, 150 grams. Um, I got this in Yarndale a couple of years ago uh, in the bargain basket. And um, and yeah, it, it's just there's nothing wrong with the yarn. It's just the the, the machine that do their skeins got a little bit overcarried and uh, and did uh, 150 grams for some things instead of the standard 100 grams. Uh, so we ended up in the in the bargain basket. Uh, and uh, and it's great. So I've got two of those. So I've got 300 grams, which should be enough for uh, this pullover there. Uh, if my math is right. Uh, so I'm currently on the back and uh, in, in just a plain stockinette stitch. Leo break as I had to change the batteries and the memory card in my camera. Um, so um, I'm currently on the back of the sweater and uh, I have knitted most of the uh, just stockinette stitch before um, from the bottom uh, towards uh, where I'm gonna be starting the raglans in about an inch or so now. Um, this is the second time I get to this point actually uh, on the departure day. Uh, I started the decreases and, uh, and, and I counted just to check I had uh, the right amount of stitches before starting on the raglan and I realized I started uh, I had 20 stitches more than I should have uh, what I do when I cast on stitches and I count them I count them by a lot of 20 and uh, and I must have counting like a, a bunch of 20 twice so uh, it's not like I had a a stitch or two too many is like literally I can see what I've done and I started you know one two three four twenty and then the next twenty instead of going to forty I just got back to twenty and and so so yeah but because I've got a limited limited amount of yarn uh, from the bargain basket I don't think I could um, afford the extra fabric and kind of work it out to to make it fit with the raglans and things like that so I basically all pulled it out at the airport uh, and then I cast it on again on the plane uh, to Tromso. So yes, yeah, so I'm back to where I basically uh, left it. I was before I started this trip. A um, little setback, but not too huge. Uh, so yeah, I've got another inch or so before I start the raglan. Uh, it's going to be interesting uh, to see the progress of this because this is literally my travel project and it's quite packable so I'm probably going to be talking about it really only uh, when I make videos on um, on travels or possibly if I take it to uh, knit night or, or some knit gatherings uh, with friends because uh, it's easily packable and it's a bit, you know, it's, it, it's not too demanding on the brain so so yeah, uh, but anyway, I'm probably gonna get going um, quite soon. I have my cup of tea, a bit of breakfast, and then get on the road. Uh, looks like the weather today isn't too bad. The the sun is coming out just now as I speak. Um, the the um, the snow wasn't too huge, so I, I don't expect it'll be too uh, too tricky to uh, to uh, travel about. So uh, hopefully we might be able to take the car and uh, go see some more fjords and lovely sceneries. Uh, so uh, we'll see you later with some more images of beautiful Tromso. <laughs>
just to say that all these landscapes in Norway they're just absolutely stunning it's just absolutely breathtaking I never got to share uh, which pair of socks I have been wearing today or I chose to wear today here they are then at the end of the day instead and these are the Rye Lights socks by Tin Can Nets uh, very recognizable by the uh, guard stitch front panel on the sock yeah. uh, the yarn uh, was a gift from my friend Martha. She bought it back for me from a trip to the US to visit some family. Uh, I do not remember um, the the brand or the dyer. I'm not even sure I've got the label yet but it came from a, a local shop to uh, her family. So this is very precious and the colours uh, are very autumnal which I love they work out very well on this particular pattern i'm just going to zoom a little bit and show you i finished those socks quite recently so actually today was the first day i got to wear them and they are doing the job fantastically uh, they're very comfy uh, in my boots and uh, very cozy so perfect it's time to leave Tromso. Today uh, we take the plane back uh, home, or kind of. And um, so we are about to pack. I'm about to pack my suitcase. So before I do that, I just wanted to show you an ensemble of the sweaters I've been uh, wearing this past few days. Um, these are my very wintry uh, knitwears um, because it's been, it's been quite cool I mean even on the sunny days it's been up to 10 degrees celsius um, but that's a, just enough to wear a sweater without a jacket but still sweater required um, I'll talk about more about each sweater individually when I get home um, but I thought I'd show you uh, already uh, what I've been wearing um, the black one with the yoke and the, the grey cardigan are uh, staples of my winter wardrobe and my um, cold destination travel um, sweaters. Um, the orange one I just finished recently, well, a few months ago. So it's uh, I've been wearing it since I finished it, but it's um, well, actually it's a second trip. Um, but it's first proper winter one, and uh, I think it's going to become a favorite too. So, yeah, I'll show a little bit more of a close-up to you and then I'll uh, put them in the suitcase and I'll talk about them later on. And we are back from Norway I actually got back last week uh, last Friday uh, it is Friday again today so literally a week ago but you know real life at work and things and then I only get round to uh, um, film this uh, rest of the podcast just now anyway so as I just mentioned at the end of this vlog part of this podcast this Norway blog um, I wanted to talk individually about each of the sweaters that I've been wearing uh, in Norway. Uh, my um, wintry uh, knitwear, which I usually put in travels when I 
mostly end up in Scandinavia to be quite honest. Sometimes if I go to Scotland in the winter for Christmas or something but you know proper cold weather. First up I'm gonna start from the uh, ones that I need the longest time ago to the most recent. Um, so the oldest sweater that I've got out of the three I'm gonna show you is this one. This is the uh, Silene cardigan which is from uh, Pam Allen and which is available only in the Loops 10 book. Um, this book was uh, released um, for the occasion of uh, the shop Loop in London birthday, uh, the 10 years of Loop in London. Um, there is no individual pattern for this. Um, so and uh, and I got the chance to uh, borrow that book from uh, a pal at the time so I was quite nice. Um, this cardigan, the yarn called for this cardigan is a worsted weight, I believe it's a Quince and Co worsted and uh, for some reason I should have used a DK really for a uh, yarn, you know for gauge but for some reason I decided to go for a uh, West Yorkshire Spinner Jacob Aaron uh, which is much much thicker um, so I believe this is the mid grey um, the West Yorkshire Spinner uh, Jacob is only natural um, shades um, and they come from like a uh, white up to a uh, dark grey and I believe this is the mid grey one um, so yeah, so because it's an iron, it's quite heavy actually for an iron, I think. Um, my gauge is very dense, uh, but actually it's great. I really love it for this. It's a proper winter wear. Um, it's, you know, rainproof, windproof, everything proof. I'm like, I'm a sheep when I'm wearing this and I can go anywhere. So, um, so yeah, I absolutely love it. I can't remember which needle size I actually used. Uh, this is me not taking the proper notes in my Ravelry page uh, when I need to. Hey. So um, it's just, it's a pretty much a basic raglan uh, cardigan. Um, the only uh, difference, so you start from the top and you build a raglan and you separate the sleeves and things like that. But uh, as you can see, actually the stockinette side of it it's straight and it's really the garter stitch that is increasing so um it's really simple in the fact that it's a basic raglan and you just have this a stitch marker on each side of the um cardigan where uh, the stock net switches to the garter stitch and basically every second row or something you just increase garter stitch and the panel grows and the cardigan grows as well but the stock net doesn't it's straight on so this is it it's um the uh silene cardigan if i pronounce that right typically as i said i probably pronounce everything not right so never mind that thank god i'm putting notes written which i can spell properly and you decide how you want to pronounce it um, and moving on to the other uh, sweater, which uh, I have hang up on the door, so just bear with me one second. And I am rolling back into frame. This sweater is, um, every time I put this sweater, I put this sweater on social media or something and I show myself in it, everybody is like, oh, what is it? It's beautiful. What is it? Yes, it is beautiful. I like it very much. Thank you for liking it too. Um, this is a bit of a mashup of two patterns. It is literally a mashup of two patterns, not a little bit. Uh, the base of the pattern is the Stroker by Isolde Teague. Uh, which is our, our first staple um, loppy yarn uh, pattern. Um, I don't know what I've done with the pattern. I wanted to show it to you. Uh, I don't know where it's gone because I do have it in printed version. Um, I did. I did not buy it um, as a as a download. It's literally a printed one. I don't know where it is. 
Um, but yeah, so if you know the Strucker, you will see obviously that this is not the yoke of the Strucker. Um, I had knitted a, a Strucker as is per pattern and I really loved the shape and the fit of it. I quite like that this pattern has a lot of um, measurements all around the body so it's easy to um, alter and make it fit to your body shape and your own measurements. So usually I'm quite thin up to the bust and then because I have a little bit of a tummy and, need to, and big hips. <laughs> I need to um to widen things out um to make it fit so the the stroker and all the measurements allow me to do that so when I went to when I wanted a new um another uh, loppy sweater um I decided to base myself on this uh stroker for um the shape and measurements but I wanted a different yoke and the uh, yoke that I chose and you bear with me for my awful Icelandic probably as awful as my Norwegian pronunciation it is the Vormorgun Let Lopa Vesti and it is a free pattern on Ravelry um, so yeah so basically I'd, I'm, I'm not great I'm doing math in this kind of thing so it's literally DIY put a yoke onto the sweater and like oh maybe if I decrease there that will do and it sort of works so I'm quite happy I can tell you have done it though it's literally a total improvisation uh, the only thing I would say is that let Lopa Vesti pattern the um, little waves are um, going a different direction I wanted my waves to be you know going down the round bit down whereas on the pattern they're more likely all bridges you know going up so uh, so yeah on top of having to make it fit to a different pattern I had to reverse it so, honestly I don't even know how I make it work um, this is definitely not my forte and um, the yarn um, is uh, Icelandic Let Loppy yarn by Istex and actually have a ball to show you the label of there we are, this is the little loppy. Um, this yarn I've bought on the, my second trip to Iceland uh, just about three years ago, a little bit over three years ago. So it's a nice um, souvenir yarn. You can tell I like to buy my yarn when I go travel. A nice little souvenir yarn. And um, and I made it into a sweater, which I absolutely adore. Um, so obviously black for the main body and then a bit of white. Uh, there are a lot of greys in uh, the Let Loppy collection. I believe I used the dark heather grey and the light heather grey for this sweater. And then uh, some the yellow I think is a heather one as well. And then the orange and the red are just basic ones. Um, and yeah. The gauge is quite regular, it's not as uh, dense as my silent cardigan, so um, it is breathable. Um, but yet, it's still warm and, uh, and uh, waterproof, I would think, actually quite a bit. Um, I'm pretty sure I wore it, uh, in, uh, I wore it in, in rain and it's been pretty great so yes indeed uh, the construction it's a, it's a very base well except for the fact that you can alter the measurements as you wish to with the stroker it is a yoke sweater construction uh, which is uh, you knit from the bottom up the body you film from the bottom up the sleeves and then you join everything and you do the yoke um, the stroker uh, has um, garter stitch on the um, cuffs and neckline this is the bit that I didn't really like on the sweater when I needed the first time round as an actual stroker so for this version I chose to do a um, one by one rib which I like best or better the best so um, the last item I wanted to show you which I uh, brought with me on my travels to Norway is this 
a Kiko cardigan by Yoko Hata. I'm just going to try to get up and show you a little bit more of it. There we are. Up. I don't know what I'm doing. Up. And um, yes. I like to close my um, open cardigan with a shawl pin. That's just um, I don't I don't I rarely do shawl pins on the shawl. I use them on cardigans. Okay, eh, whatever. So Akiko by Yoko Hata, which is a Japanese designer um, who designed this particular cardigan for Brooklyn Tweed. This is of the Wool People Volume Eleven in June. 2017 so two years ago um this is a th this is for the brooklyn twin arbor uh yarn um so it's a dk weight and I actually use a dk weight for this but i've used midwinter yarns black and blue oh about that can we get is it doing it Yes, it is. So the black and blue is 100% uh, Welsh wool and it's blue fest Leicester and black blue fest Leicester, which gives this um, natural grey blend yarn. And when it's done, it gives the extra depth of colour, uh, which I really like. Um, kind of, well, this heathered um, sort of colours. Um, this particular color is Jamie and correct me if I'm wrong Jesus there we are correct me if I'm wrong but I believe it is inspired by the uh, TV series Outlander and the main male character whose name is Jamie and who is Gingerhead eh hey, well but I uh, absolutely love this. I bought this yarn in Yarningham last year. I did. Because uh, midwinter yarns, they were just across from me. So I was very, very tempted. Not for long. I did give up quite easily, actually. So anyway, um, I've knitted this at Gage. I believe this is... Uh, so I, I've done this proper, the Gage. I have to say, look at this. I did the stockinette and I did the seat stitch and I did a little bit of the cable swatch as well just to be sure I could do it on uh, the uh, same needle size which is a four millimeter it's a US 6 I think um, the construction it's um, a little peculiar compared to what I'm used to it's a kind of like a, a star shape uh, construction so you start from one side panel so it's like a, you're knitting a bit of a, a scarf really with the, uh, the um, cables running on one side and then the uh, seat stitch and once you uh, done a bit of a decrease towards uh, the back you uh, then put your light stitches on hold and then you knit the other panel just so obviously it's the um, cables are symmetrical and everything is fine so once you reach that point again at the back then it's a bit of a graft i've done it with kitchener stitch i cannot quite remember what the pattern advises for um um, attaching them two pieces together but I did some kitchen stitch and I'm uh, quite happy with that. I'm not a big fan of a three needle um, cast off or um, crafting thing so um, I did that so once you got your big kind of piece scarf bit um, picking up stitches and do the uh, stuck in it at the back and then you pick up some stitches across the back and um and the fronts and uh, you do your um two by two rib sleeves then you block it to uh shape and size and then you um mattress stitch it together which i'm not i'm not a big professional of mattress stitch but um 
it's it's okay it's all right yes so um i do like this sweater uh a lot i i love knitting it actually it's a, it's a lot of work but it's been i mean the cable is um becomes very intuitive and uh and i did enjoy it, it was um it was really good. It was a bit of a labor of love in terms of time. It took me a while, but it was well worth it. I absolutely adore this. Um, I mean, I do love boxy things in general, as you probably will figure if uh, I carry on showing you my knitwear. Um, but I do like this um, as a winter wear, as it is. Um, the black and blue is it's very warm yarn, actually. It's very warm GK. Um, but I also got to wear it the first time I took it I just finished it and I went to France uh, to Marseille to visit my mom and my family and it was this um, week in late February uh, early March when it was spring before spring spring in the middle of winter and uh, and actually, actually I took this Akiko um, instead of bringing an actual winter coat and I was just fine you know to wear over a lighter garment so thumbs up all round love this sweater love the my yarn choice as well love the yarn love the color love everything about it i'm gonna move on to show you the um set the record straight for the yarns that i used in the socks i've been showing you on the uh, vlog uh part of this podcast so the first pair of socks that i showed you on my trips are the blueberry tarn by lou stillbrook the label is here the yarn is so it is made in Italy as I said and it is the Cecia Dahu Fancy and it is 50% uh, virgin wool 25% alpaca and 25% acrylic um, there is no color name it's just a number and it's uh, 369 um, there you go so it's it is really really nice and actually nice on some blocker i can show you that cable running properly along the side of the sock there we are i haven't yet fixed that little toe that was um uh, unraveling itself um i have yet to wash my socks actually after i got back oops um so yeah i mean to be honest we're going into spring so uh it might have to wait until uh it's winter time again no rush basically no rush oops then i've talked to you about um this mashed potato socks right here oh there you go see how hey i'm hiding the bit that i need to wash proper there you go this yarn is so cast on cast off which is hand dyed with love in australia so i got this off uh, a fiber share uh exchange um and um yes so the yarn base is super soft yeah super soft sock which is 80 percent 20 percent merino nylon um which is my favorite kind of um, blend uh, when it comes to merino socks usually i'm struggling i found out you know knitting a lot of socks that um when it comes even to 75 25 percent 25 is just a little bit too much nylon for my personal liking so i'm really glad that wendy who sent me this uh, fiber share my first fiber share was um um really respectful of the fact that i'm not i'm i love 80 20 and she only got me 80 20 uh, for sock yarn so that was good and the colorway is just to finish this quickly is tiger lily and uh, I am not a pink person usually, but for this sock, I absolutely love it. I usually, um, if there's a color I don't, I like, but I'm not 
a huge fan of in terms of wearing to garment i'm gonna give it a go at socks and it's just very satisfying um and i still haven't found the label for this uh flax light uh i still don't know can't remember what yarn it is i'm pretty sure it's a merino sock yarn of sort um don't know now for an update on my traveling project um i have finished the back of my hayward um sweater so i still got all the stitch markers because obviously i just want to make sure i've got um well because i forgot to take some of it but i'm going to keep some anyway uh, when i do the front uh, so i can get my uh, measurements uh, correct um so yes yeah, so flew back to Tromso. I didn't fly straight home. I flew to Paris with my friend and I stayed in Paris for a couple of days and then I took the Eurostar back uh, to the UK um, then. Uh, so yeah, so that allowed me to finish um, this uh, piece, especially the raglan because when I've left you in Norway, I had just, just about reached uh, where I needed to start the decreases. Um, so yeah, so between the flight back to Paris and then maybe a bit of knitting in Paris and then the whole train journey, Eurostar, and then a uh, train from uh, London to York, um, the back is finished. So I'm well pleased. That's uh, one piece down, three to go. Excellent. Uh, just a quick reminder of what this uh this pattern is because obviously I did that introduction it was like seven in the morning I wasn't awake at all um, this is the Hayward uh, sweater by Julie Hoover this is of a Brooklyn Tweed collection this is the BT fall uh, 12 as in uh, 2012 so it's quite it's quite old now but uh, hey it's quite nice too um, the uh, yarn, as I mentioned, is a John Arban. God, the label is all over the shop. Um, oh dear, oh dear. There we are. John Arban textile. This is the harvest use in the good grief. Juniper colorway. Apologies, another impromptu cut as I had to change the um, battery. Uh, not the battery this time, the memory card, sorry. Uh, so I was saying, so yeah, this is a merino based yarn, the harvest use. So obviously the texture is much different uh, than the uh, yarn than this pattern calls for. Um, so we shall see how it blocks. It should be much softer and much drapier uh, than the um, than the original pattern in the Brooklyn Tweed uh, loft, I think, which is a is much is a much sturdier yarn, um, and hopefully um, it won't roll up too much because obviously if it's a sturdy yarn and sturdy fabric, it sits nicely. Um, however, the pattern allows for a little trick. There's a little, a tiny little uh, row of garter stitch at the bottom, which uh, once blocked and sewn together, that should hold the um, the fabric down uh, and prevent it to roll up. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, so far I'm enjoying a lot this knit, uh, this knitting, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, cast on the uh, front on my next uh, trip or little uh, excursion to uh, visit some knitting pals. <laughs> Just to put you into context, um, I 
wanted to start a podcast uh, originally to make it in the French language mostly and uh, that was drawn from the idea that I was really interested into um, the cultural difference between uh, knitting in French and knitting in English. Uh, I've been watching obviously um, I mean I've learned knitting from my mom uh, so obviously in French but then you know dropped when I was little teenager never got to it and then eventually got back and it just got obsession uh, scale and uh, that happened when I was already living in the UK so I really relearned and evolved uh, in the British and English speaking knitting community and um, and it's been a while now I've been now watching some uh, French speaking podcast um, and it's really interesting to see the cultural difference, uh, especially since the French knitters are starting to want to um, knit, you know, Brit English speaking or English patterns in the English language. And, and so there's, there's this whole culture and even the French designer, it's like the, the way we French think of knitting is evolving and it's, it's really interesting to, to see that and to explore this. So I wanted this rubric, this, this little section of this um, of the podcast is mostly directed to the French speaking listeners and, uh, and viewers of this podcast, but there may be times when it is um, suitable and um, and uh, and worth to actually speak to you in English about. Uh, this is the case of this um, first um, first uh, edition, first episode, um, because I wanted to talk about yarn weights. And um, I thought, as long as you were, you know, speaking English, you would know what a fingering and what a DK and what an RN weight is. That I don't think is the case. Well, um, first of all, when it comes to French people, and I think, as I found actually uh, working in yarn shows international like Edinburgh Yarn Festival, uh, I've got a lot of uh, people from continental Europe that actually did. did don't know what this um, fingering and DK is um, so because they, they work yarn weights differently um, so in France um, traditionally I think I see that from going to the yarn shop with my mom and then talking to my mom about this uh, what well, you know the thickness of uh, of a yarn and things like that um, we, when you go to a yarn shop in France, um, you will mostly see the information that you will find will be the needle size this should be knitted in and the uh, gauge at which this yarn should be knitted at, which I found very subjective and not really open-minded enough because I found the gauge is very subjective as a knitter to start with because you know you might be a tight knitter you might be a loose knitter so when people tell you this yarn should be knitted in 3.5 millimeters yes at such gauge okay but really you should be gauging yourself and decide that's the case and so it's a little bit tricky when you're going to buy yarn for a project and your gauge it tells you it's a gauge but your gauge is different and then you end up with the wrong yarn so it's not my favorite way and I don't, I don't think it ever was I was never comfortable and that might be I don't know that might be why I never really took on knitting much before um when I was in France and when I'm in France but you know I've uh I've grown into um learning to recognize yarn and kind of substitute in a different way Yet another interruption, apologies for this. Uh, this seems to only happen when I film in English. Um, never did that when I was doing the French bits of this podcast. This time though, it was uh, both the memory card and the battery at once. Anyway, uh, so I was saying in the English language, when it comes to yarn weight, we do have this sort of standardized um, names for to qualify and uh, describe uh, the thickness of uh, a yarn. Um, yeah, but 
just to uh, say that um, this yarn weights are not in relation to how many plies um, the yarn is uh, constituted of. Um, for example, I mean, we do usually refer four ply as a fingering and a double knit will be an eight ply, but that is not necessarily the case. Uh, for example, when it comes to fingering, a single is going to be a fingering, but a single is just the one thread. Um, and, you know, so it, some there are some, you know, um, common um, thinking into uh, this four ply being a fingering and this kind of thing. But it actually, when it comes to the um, uh, classification of, uh, of yarn, it, it, of yarn weights it doesn't actually really come into play so so yeah anyway so for me and because now between all this carry on i completely forgot uh lost the thread of my thought but uh so yeah i do not like the way you know when i go to a french yarn shop uh, when it's just um or i would say an old-fashioned because i think even the yarn shop if they're quite modern is a modern knitter that actually um is um holding the shop then they they might be more aware of this uh, yarn our yarn weight uh, classification as opposed to uh, the um, older style thing which is uh, give you a needle size give you a gauge and um, deal with it um, so I do like to use a combination of this uh, classification recommendation that is uh, whether it's a fingering of a DK as well as looking at the yardage of the um, of the yarn so how many meters there is per hundred grams usually that gives me a good indication especially when it comes to substituting um, less and less common um, yarn such as sport or worsted things that we don't usually find in the UK obviously it's more American kind of weights um, so yeah when I need to substitute a sport or a worsted I'm going to look at how many meters or yards there is per hundred grams and then I know I need to for worsted for example I'll know whether I need to go to a DK or towards an iron uh, to stop, substitute um, the yarn also, um, I spoke about on the French bit about the rub per inch, uh, just to uh, which is a, a a nice way to kind of guess what yarn weight your yarn is. Um, if you don't know, I think this is mostly used by uh, spinners. Um, I might be wrong, but uh, but basically it is a gauge that is one inch, and you wrap your yarn around it and uh, how many wraps will uh, define how many um what yarn weight your yarn is um this is a, a little table uh that i've uh, printed just for indication um but again funnily enough so uh, you can either literally just wrap things uh, around but you know if you don't want to break into your skin you can just so yeah so you can use uh, an actual gauge or you can build one just like i did mine on the on the pencil when i uh just put two elastic bands um around the thing so uh yeah and then you just kind of go around and then you can count how many i'm not doing this properly properly it's not very practical uh i do apologize for the background because in the midst of changing both my batteries and my memory card the cat woken up from her little nap so now she's all over the room and and doing god knows what mischief um so so we got two four six seven eight 10 but i mean to be honest that that's 10 comfortably which i believe is a yeah it's between a worsted and a dk i mean i did on the other video i counted 12 so it must have been very tight but anyway so it kind of depends how you wrap it you wrap it tight you not wrap it tight and then you know um it's probably because i took it there and it's actually more stretched so 
uh, but then again it kind of depends on what the fiber is because if something that's going to bloom uh, when it's blocked is the count really accurate as you measure it before knitting it it's it's all very you know it's a good indication it's a good information to have but i don't think it should be taken as as a, as a solid ground you know at the end of the day there's only one thing that's gonna help you uh find the right yarn for your project and that is swatching because everybody's a different knitter everybody's a different gauge all yarns are different um so th there's so many things that comes into play um it's just just watch to just watch gauge and uh and um and hopefully you will find uh the right thing for you uh so just quickly so for me this is the way i see the classification some people might disagree with what i'm going to say but you know in terms of a meter age a yard age per 100 grams in relation to what yarn weight this um is but um so the lace uh, is the thinnest well we've got cobweb and le lace um but usually so that will be something that for me is a hundred meters per hundred grams and they usually is a knitted as a very thin thin needle size uh, like a 1.5 or up to a two depending on the thing which is yeah that is the other thing i mentioned i, I lost my uh, track of thoughts and forgot to tell you about this bit is that in the modern knitting i would i'm gonna say uh we are breaking the rules as well um in terms of this yarn weight should go with this size needle as a standard designers nowadays play with the fact that if you use a larger needle size for a thin yarn then obviously you're gonna have something very airy and something very drapey and uh, similarly if you want something sturdier you're gonna use a thicker yarn but with a, a yarn that's a little bit smaller than the one it should be knitted with in the first place so so again it comes back to actually swatching and um looking at what yarn they usually use and you're looking at is, is it a fingering or is it a DK or and what kind of meterage per 100 grams uh, so that you would know, I personally would know where to go when I need to purchase the yarn. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot of breaking rules and then, you know, altering this, this standards uh, to fit what we want to knit and what we want to wear so and how we want to wear it so there's a lot of things so yes back to my classification thing uh lace usually i would think that's a hit 800 meters per 100 grams then we come to fingering weight which is also known as four ply in a lot of places when it actually is a four ply and usually that is at uh, 400 meter per 100 gram and uh as a garment, I would usually knit it as a 3.5 millimeters, but obviously, usually for shawls, you bump it to four millimeters, sometimes 4.5 millimeters to give it like a good drip and, and you know, uh, the texture that you want very airy um sock yarn i find usually is a little bit is the fingering weight, but it tends to be a little thicker um because usually a sock yarn can be up to um, 3.6, um, sorry, 365 meters uh, per 100 grams. So it's a little bit thicker, uh, especially when it has nylon in it. It's, um, yeah, it tends to do that. Um, but then again, see, for example, the sock yarn, which is a finger in per se, but you're going to need a sock yarn, you know, quite tight uh, to have, you know, to, to make it comfortable and to make it, purposeful um and that usually is going to be a 2.5 millimeters or a 2.75 not a 3.5 as you would do for a garment so again it's like you know and there are loads of and you know they're interchangeable like depending on the you know we need garment with sock yarn and then we need socks with things that have no nylon that you wouldn't classify as a sock yarn maybe but that work perfectly fine so yeah 
Um, then from fingering we're going to move to sports which I usually knit I've got a pretty standard gauge I would think so I usually knit this as a 3.75 millimeter needles and the yardage the meterage will be about 300 meters per hundred gram then DK double knit uh, to me is a 230 to 250 meter per hundred grams and that is where the big debate is <laughs> I found when I go places I found DK and it's like much thicker or like much less meterage or much more meterage and I'm like no 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 <laughs> to me the way the all the DK that I've knit and then I gauge as a DK for a pattern that calls for double net uh, so usually I need that as a four millimeters and a mid gauge just like this Akiko a mid gauge and that was a double net and it's a 250 gram per 100 grams so um so yeah so yeah that's my personal opinion and that's usually what i go for uh when i need a dk and uh then next is a worsted uh, which uh so it's gonna be a little um thicker than this so maybe up to yeah to 200 200 220 meters per 100 grams uh and i would yeah worsted i would I can knit as a DK gauge or just slightly larger as a 4.5 millimeter needles uh, but then again in the UK we don't have so much worsted yarn it's more an American weight so we'll um, uh, yeah so this is where I really need I really like to look at the meter age how meter how many meters there is per 100 grams because depending which it is I'm going to lean towards using a DK as a substitute. I'm going to lean towards an Aran as a substitute. So far, it's not failed me. I mean, obviously, when I did the silent cardigan, that was quite a while ago. But then, you know, I know now that I should have used a DK really to meet gauge. But I quite like the thicker thing. So sometimes you play with that too. You know, uh, it's it's just an indication. It's not set in stone and you should not take it for granted as per you know this is this is a recommendation this is an information you can use you do whatever you want with that um from worsted we're going to iron weight for me an iron weight is about 100 uh, 180 meters per 100 gram and i usually knit that as a 4.5 millimeter very rarely i would knit it as a five millimeters um unless it's it's a quite on the thick side uh like uh, an iron weight that will be 160 meters maybe and then we're going to chunky and super chunky but i never knit with chunky or super chunky so i just i I can't talk about it. I don't even know how many meters there is in a chunky or this kind of thing. So I think it's 120 maybe. I don't know. Uh, and then very thick, thick, thick needles. Um, so yeah, that's this is this is what I usually do for yarn weights. Um, if you're not familiar with all these um, names uh, of fingering and things like that, uh, this is just give you a direction towards a certain type of yarn uh, but then again between this the meter range or the yardage per 100 grams and obviously the gauge your swatch and compare it to the swatch of this uh, of the designer you're gonna knit because obviously this is the most important it's not you know um, some people would gauge you know, I think if the DK, so they're going to get you out what you usually do as a DK to kind of like, okay, that's fine. Uh, you know, if you want to improvise your um, your knit, your item of knitwear or, you know, you want to improvise a shawl, you want to improvise a sweater, you can, you know, can gauge the yarn and, and, you know, oh, this is gauging as a DK. So I know I can do this and this in terms of measurements. But otherwise, I would just, uh, you know, it's important to, if you're following a pattern to... Um, meet the gauge or uh, from the designer if you do not meet the gauge then you, you if you gauge you will know how to calculate um, how to make it fit if it's your gauge is smaller or bigger and this kind of things um, yes 
so that is i believe it for um this um first episode of this podcast um please do comment uh below or on the rivalry group um about this especially this section because i'm rambling about uh, yarn waste i don't even know if i make any sense um <laughs> Never mind, this is, you know, this is an experiment. This is a very much a work in progress. Um, so, so yeah, uh, hopefully I will, uh, it does make sense and I'll uh, get to talk more about other things. If you have any suggestion, um, I will say uh, that I do know very little about French yarns. Uh, when I get to knit it, I've got some, but when I get to knit it, I'll talk about it maybe, uh, but you know, um, so don't don't ask me much about French yarn because I don't know much about it really. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so thank you for watching. If you made it that far, thank you very much uh, for uh, watching this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, um, please do like this video, subscribe to the channel so you know when the next episode uh, will come. Uh, I aim to do an episode every month. Uh, as I said before, um, uh, I give myself some freedom in terms of how I want to structure this. So uh, next month, next episode should be a bit more standard because I don't have any huge travels planned for the next few weeks. So, uh, so it should be a bit more standard we'll see maybe not maybe maybe i'll find something to do that's a bit more original but hopefully a bit more uh a sort of regular kind of podcast type so with some knitting and uh, finish objects hopefully uh some work in progress more than one i meant to say i am not a monogamous knitter no 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 i had one travel project to show you today uh but i've got way more works in progress uh in the living room don't you worry um so and then uh, maybe some sewing as well uh, hopefully i'll get that cracked up um this weekend and i have things to show you um next time i see you here so yes so in the meantime so see you soon and in the meantime happy making